Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important topic if you're breeding, and that is ovulation. We have done these, oh, before I get into this, go ahead and click like, click subscribe. You know, all those other people do fancy stuff like, here's this button, here's that button, and, and Kurt never puts buttons for me to push in the air because we're not fancy like that. We're not bougie here. You know where to do it. Just click on the thing, hit that little bell. It'll talk to you. Watch me all the time and just tell YouTube how much you love me. If you think about it, click on our Patreon. We'd really appreciate that too. On to the video. Today we're going to talk about ovulation. And when we go to Patreon, we'll kind of talk about how our year is actually going versus where we were at last year and why I'm smiling all the time. Uh, so what we're going to do is everybody shows a snake that ovulates. Like that's common, right? We're going to show you what they look like all through the process, plus how I know when to start checking the snake to see if it's going to ovulate. We'll check a few here that have and a few that haven't. Uh, if you don't know our marking system, is these O's mean ovulation. Okay, see those little O's? I mean, it's ovulation. O-town, different than that. Uh, the dates, when you see a 4122, that signifies a prelay shed. So that means the snake has ovulated, had its prelay shed. This snake has ovulated or is in the process of ovulation, has not had its shed. My God, that's fancy right there, huh? You don't got to make rocket science out of this shit, y'all. I mean, people get all too crazy on it. This is what you kind of need to do. So let's go over what to expect. So the first thing we'll do is I look at my feed sheets, okay? And I want to see who ate and who didn't eat. This one we're skipping, obviously, because, well, she's about to lay eggs. That one ate. I'll find one that didn't here in a second. Uh, ate. Oh, so this one did not eat over here. Oh, Cleo. So then I would look at Cleo to see if she's possibly ovulating. Oh, come here, girl. And Cleo is a little het clown, possible het caramel, uh, being bred to a pastel lesser desert ghost, het krypton. Uh, so I'd really like her to ovulate. That'd be really nice. And when you look here, a couple things we'll look at on this girl to see where we're at in the process or if we're going to go. As you look at where the midsection is, and you're looking a little lower. So if you had a, a meal, if we'd fed her a big meal, right, she'd probably be swollen up like right around in here. We're looking a little bit below that. And I'm not really seeing it gets me too excited. We may be starting to experience a little bit of a build. It's hard to say, but nothing's going to get me a little poochy right there, maybe. Too happy. That grows a little bit. That's in the right spot. Then we'll be on to something. But I'm not going to give her her, oh, there you can only kind of see it, though. We might be getting there. We might be doing a little bit of building. Which would be great. Are you building for me, baby girl? Yeah, I think she is building a little bit. You can just see that right there. But I wouldn't call it ovulation yet. So we're going to put her back. Now, one thing you didn't see, because Kurt can't reach this high. i got to start being nice to Kurt. He can't really fight back when he's on the camera. And you guys don't hear all the mom jokes he makes. I owe that, dude. Is She was doing what's called side lane a little bit. Which is, instead of laying on her back, they kind of rotate. If this was her back, they're like this. They'll rotate like this a little bit to kind of heat that side. You'll also see them a lot of times head, tail, kind of in like a, almost like a horseshoe. Uh, that's also a sign that they're doing something. So that's a good sign right there by Cleo, but I wouldn't call that an ovulation yet. Oh, we'll come to this girl here. I got shit out of order. I dropped one. I don't know where it goes. You know, I guess uh, YOLO, right? Now she's already got to know, but I'll tell you what we're seeing here. Of course, this is our pastel light girl. Oh, it is a mess in there. That's okay. We'll get that all fixed here soon enough. Oh. So when we hang her up, <laughs> now she is just in the start of the process. I just put that on on her last night. So we're not too far into it yet. You gonna work with me? You gonna work with me? And you'll see that swelling right there. More evident than it was on the other one, right through there. Not as much of just a pudge. A lot more going on. Starts there, goes through there. So you can really kind of see it a little bit better. She will continue to get bigger for probably another two or three days. That's going to be kind of a slow burn. She'll get there. Feeling really good about it. Now this is one here that I'm not going to hang. Okay, and I'll show you why here in a second. This one ovulated had a prelay shed on 321. So what happens after that? Well, for keeping score today is 412. Uh, so we're about, what, 20 days in. So we still got some time. It usually takes between 30 and 45 days before they lay. But as you can see, this girl is laying on the heat, right? She's laying in a, in a coil, got her tail on the inside. That's all what we want to see. 
This will thicken up some more, but her spine will stand out a little bit there if you look close. And she's getting really thick down at the sides. So what we want, she's cooking eggs in there. She's going to kick those eggs out in probably another 10 days. Um, and before she does, she'll look really wide here. I've got one I'll show you that shows it really well, even though she was literally pre-lay shedded the same day. Uh, but we're doing really good there. 30 to 45 days, y'all. Typically closer to 30. And I've had it be as low as 25. There's a little room for error in there. See if we can't find another one. Maybe we'll find a new one today that just ovulated. Where were we at? We were here. So, where were we? Okay, we did that one. We did that one. That one A. And the reason I look for when they skip food is that's usually not all of them. That's usually a really good sign that we are at feed point. So there's another one that skipped. This is another pet clown. This one has been bred to a banana. Now you're going to see when I show you this one, I can already tell by looking. I do not think we're anywhere near. So come on, girl. No, get the cord. You can't have my mic cord. So versus the other two snakes we looked at, just a nice long cylinder, looks healthy, does not look like there's any swelling anywhere through there. This snake is in no part of ovulation. So that doesn't mean she's not gonna go. We'll have uh, eggs usually all the way up through August into September a little bit. So we have a lot more eggs to have. Uh, so we got time on it, but she's not, she's not. This is the one I did wanna show you. So this one, uh, 321, same prelay shed. But I talked about how the spine sticks out and how they get that look. She's showing that a lot more. She's actually starting to shift around. She probably won't make me go quite as long. So you can just see how very blown out it is here in the back. And that spine sticking <laughs> out. I know. I know. I won't fuck with you too much. I do believe this is her first ever rodeo. So that's awesome. But she's going to have a nice clutch for us. It's coming up pretty fast. She's going to be a little pissy. Uh, no reason to even try to feed her. And when she has that... We will clean everything out. So when they have the eggs, like my girl here just did, that's the other thing. When you see it crossed out, it's because we had the eggs. It's really, really simple. When they do, you want to reset that entire tub, clean everything out, make a brand new tub, get rid of all the smells, disinfect, because your hope is she does just what she's doing there. She's not coiling up on anything. She's still cranky and angry. She will have a shot at me if I leave her open too long. She's still a pissed off mom. But we reset everything when they do have them. Uh, before that... You kind of want to be careful. You want to keep them clean. Clean out stuff when you see it. But you definitely want to keep all the smells where they're supposed to be. See if we can't find another one that didn't. So this one is one that Kurt would really like me to find an ovulation on. But so far, I haven't found one. Maybe it's today, Kurt. Maybe it's today. This is our orange dream female. <laughs> and she has laid for us before. But she hasn't in a while. She's taken a little bit of, of a hiatus on her own accord. And as you can see there, we're not really seeing anything, right? Nothing too exciting yet. Kind of the same thing as that other one. She may have just missed a meal to miss a meal. But she's not yet there. And that's kind of how we do things. You just kind of go through. You look. You find the ones you need to check. And you check them. This is not rocket science, y'all. I promise. We'll check one more, and then we'll call it a day. This is our champagne girl here. And this is another one that I wouldn't mark yet, but when you get her to kind of flatten out, you can kind of start to see that bulge starting to form there. So we're not on a full-blown ovulation, but we're getting there. I'll do, we'll try to show you one nice full blown. I know I got one in here somewhere and then we'll call it a day. Let me look around. You all pre-lay shedded. Which one was it? Oh, this one. This is one that's not a huge ovulation. It's still got a little bit to go, but I think it's one that you'll be able to see really easy. And that is right there. So this is what those will look like in a few days. And you can really see that hanging out there. That is not a food lump. That is an ovulation uh, that may get a little bit bigger. But this snake is going to have eggs now. We know what's going to happen. I won't keep hanging you too long, baby girl. Uh, so that's what you're going to look for. By the way, it's a calico blitz. 
bred to a pastel spot nose, I believe. So that's going to be some kick-ass shit. And, and you kind of just have to monitor them. One thing we've learned that I'll tell you now so you have to learn it the way I did is it's going to be a lot less stress if you find a system for marking these. I'm that guy that kind of, uh, I don't, when I find a problem, I'll find a way to fix it. But it's hard for me to always anticipate the problem. And I'm not stupid, probably not as smart as I think I am, but I'm not an idiot. So as we're going through here, until we got to maybe last year, I could just remember in my head with anything else going on in life, uh, this is a snake that's doing this, and I could just tell Kurt. Then last year, I found myself checking them more often because I couldn't remember who had done what. Just getting to be too much of a chore. So this year I said, okay, enough of that shit, and I came up with a system. So now it's really easy for me to go through, know who's ovulated, know who hasn't, know where we're at in the process, know the exact day or roundabout day of the prelay shed, know what to expect, you know, uh, and go from there. So it's really kind of a nice way. Here's another one that's recently ovulated I'll pull out for you. This thing looks terrible in here. Again, time for a cleaning day. Don't worry. It's coming. It's not today though. There you can see a nice big bulge. And it'll still grow a little more because it's bigger on one side than the other. But that, y'all, is about as ovulation as ovulation gets. So this is another snake. You can see how big it is right there. It'll all kind of get like that. So it'll probably go whoop, a little bit more. And then it's going to disappear. And she's going to have babies for us again. Get back in there so I can come over here and clean you all up. Close that up. So, Kurt, any questions about ovulation? Um, so once they ovulate, it's like a almost uh, guaranteed that they're going to lay eggs? Yes, you'll hear a lot of reabsorption and things like that. Uh, reabsorption, I believe, tends to happen prior to ovulation. So when we see these ones that maybe I've marked a no, like this girl here, but she's on a full-blown ovulation, we're kind of jumping the gun, if I'm honest, a little bit. We're still building. We're almost right there. Could that disappear? Yeah, but that's kind of marks. So I know to keep an eye on it and know what's going on. And I keep a really close eye on the ones that just have an O but haven't had a prelay shed yet. Um, so I, I, just for me, right? But <laughs> once you hit that post ovulation, they're going to have eggs. Now, it doesn't mean they're all going to be viable eggs. You could have one that could slug out, all kinds of things. But it's, it's, it's pretty typical that you're going to have eggs once you have ovulation. Uh, people will misread ovulation. It'll happen a lot. Sometimes they'll read the building as ovulation. And like I say, true ovulation I just showed you. That snake is 100% there. These are still kind of getting getting there, but they're really close. Um, and they're ones I'm confident in at this point when I see it. Usually once you see it like that, it's going to be there. They will, um, but you know, it's always that blip. It's not just a big, it's always a blip. There's always a swell there. So yeah, you're going to have eggs. You're going to have eggs. Any other questions? Yes. All right. I love these questions. Once they have eggs, why do you pull them away from the mother and not let the mother incubate them? So there's a couple reasons for that. One is we're in a fairly temperature-controlled environment. So, uh, you know, could the mother do it? Could I hatch them with mom on it? Sure. I probably could. She'd probably do a pretty bang-up job. Uh, probably close to as good as I can do. Probably, I mean... We, have, we average about a 95% live hatch rate. I don't know if she would hit that, but it's not so much about that. The reason we do that is when she has those eggs, uh, she's likely to not eat. Okay, She's likely that she's going to stay off food. Uh, she's going to guard those eggs. It's going to be more stressful for her. Um, and it's going to take two months of if I get food in her, it's going to be small food, like not what I really want to get in her. I really want to get these girls that have eggs, I need to get them eating, and I need to get them eating big meals to get that weight back on. They lose about a third of their body weight when they have a clutch of eggs. So we're pulling them to, one, control that incubation a lot closer than mom probably can in our environments, even with thermostat and good weather, and two, to get mom back on food to get her back healthy quicker in hopes that we can breed her again next year. Now, that being said, you have to put the animal health above breeding. Um, and I can tell you, we had a Mojave we haven't bred last year or this year because she just went through some health problems. We had to kind of figure out what's going on with her, get her back on food really good. I'm just not comfortable breeding her yet. She gained some more weight back. We had another normal that we did end up losing. I'm pretty sure she was old as hell and got some cancer going on in there. Uh, we did not breed because of that. And this is the first year in three years, we skipped for two solid years, we bred our, our fire yellow belly because of a retained egg. So we always will put getting the snake back to health 
before we'll put just trying to make money. If we look at the animal, we don't feel good about it. We don't breed it. Uh, but our options, our chances are better pulling mom, cleaning and disinfecting, trying to get her not to set on eggs and get her back to eating. Any other questions? No. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.